Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will start developing a co-design environment between Cadence and HFSS. So as a first example, I'll show you how to design or how to do a layout of a simple grounded coplanar waveguide. We'll export that from Cadence, import it to HFSS using the files that we made in the last video, which is the text file, the AMAT file, and the layer mapping file. And we'll do a quick simulation and try to see if we can come up with a design that gives us a 50 ohm line. Okay, so a couple of housekeeping points before we get started. I made a few changes to the uh, tech file, which uh, one of the changes I mentioned in the previous video as a comment. So one error that I had was I did not update these two values, which I've done now. Another change that I made uh, is that I actually want to change so if I go back to these layers, I want to make a ground plane out of all of these metal layers. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So earlier I said I'm making a ground only with M1, M2. But actually when I was running some experiments, I saw that M1, M8 is a better ground. It gives us a better 50 ohm line design. Okay, so let's actually change that now. So it was M1, M2 earlier, but now in the middle I made M1, M4, but it should be M1, M8. And then the side walls will be M1, M11. <clears throat> which is all of these metal layers. Okay, so these two changes have been made. And another small change I made is that I changed the color of M11. I didn't like the dark green color, so I changed it to orange. Uh, we'll see how that looks. I haven't actually looked at the orange color yet. Okay, so we'll save these changes and um, <clears throat> close this file. All right, so we'll make a new library for the layouts. So I'll call this AVM. A04 transmission lines YouTube attached to GPDK. Okay. And then we'll make a new layout. So we're slowly getting into layouts now. Cell view. <clears throat> and then select layout here. Uh, and I'm calling it GCPW line. Maybe I'll say V1 or high frequency. So we'll also make a model for this, which is DRC clean. So here we are making the high frequency model to first make sure we get the geometry right for a 50 ohm line. And the next video, I'll show you how you can take this high frequency layout and then convert it into a DRC clean layout. Okay. Hit okay. <clears throat> and this gives us a layout window. Um, if you've never seen this before, then this is where we'll do the layouts of all our uh, devices. Um, so in this case, we're just doing a GCPW line. Okay, so I would recommend if you've never used Cadence before to go through the hotkeys, uh, Cadence hotkeys. So I provided a link on my website. So let me show you where that is. Okay, so if you go to resources, then I have a link to a website by Alberto, I guess his name is. Uh, and I think this is a nice website. He kind of goes through all the different hotkeys for the schematic level, which is all of these, and for the layout as well. Right? So I'll be using a lot of these hotkeys and that's why I think it's good to know where they come from. Okay, but if you've already done layouts before, then you probably know what to do. All right, so first we'll make the center metal contact. So click on metal 11, hit R for uh, a rectangle, and then Q. And then I'll make this minus 2.5 to minus maybe 25, 2.5 to 25. Okay. <clears throat> then hit F to show the full view. All right, so that's what that looks like. That's the center conductor. And then it's always useful to have this tech file open. So we made the center conductor with M11, and then I want to make a ground with M1, M8, right? So M1, M8 is 74, which is ESD dummy layer, right? So uh, that's what I need to use. Um, again, I'll say, um, I'll just make a rectangle and then hit Q and call this ESD dummy. And I wanna make this the size of minus 25, minus 25, 25. Okay. 
there we go. Um, so if I actually just take a quick peek at the line I just designed, which looks something like this, this is sort of what it will look like. I'm just trying to see what value of ground plane size did I, okay, use the size of 10. And this one had a size of about 40, okay, got it. Okay, so since that was 10, uh, this should be, sorry. Yeah, 10 on each side, okay. So 10 and 10, okay. So that's the ground plane M1, M8. Um, and then if you look at the side walls, which is M1, M11, <clears throat> that was um, TIO dummy 22, okay? So the simple way to do this is to just make a sidewall and then change its value from minus 30, minus 25, <clears throat> minus 10, 25. Uh, actually, this should be minus 50, okay? And then hit okay. And then we can copy it. Uh, this should be the IO dummy. Okay. So go back and check. M1, M11 was the IO dummy. Okay, good. Okay. And then I'll make a copy and move this onto this side. So if you want it to attach like that, then you have to turn on gravity for which you need to hit G. So you can see gravity is now off. I'll hit G again here come here click hit g and then you can see gravity is turned on okay all right um so now we have basically the metal layer the ground plane the center conductor ground plane and the side walls uh it's also good to make the different dielectric layers here itself you don't have to do that you can i'll show you another way to do it but let's actually do that so i'll just make a huge rectangle and the different dielectric layers are the silicon, which is cap dummy, resistance dummy, BJT, NPN, and PW dummy. Okay, so let's go ahead and make those. So I'll say this is from like minus maybe 50, minus 50, 50. This is cap dummy. Okay, there we go. And then I'll make a few copies of this because we have five different metal layer, uh, dielectric layers. So this one I'll say resistor dummy. And then this one is BJT dummy. This one is NPN dummy. And this one is PW dummy. I think that's it. BNPW, BJT resistors. It's good. And now we'll move back all of these layers too. Okay, I'll line them up. Okay. So now we have all of these layers done. And that should be enough actually for now. So we don't need to make an air box. We'll make that separately in HFSS. So all the dielectric layers are in, the metal layers are in. So let's export it. So to export it, you need to save it and then make sure this is the only layout open or this is the layout that's open. Then open your <clears throat> cadence uh, window then hit file, export, and then stream. And then make sure you're streaming the right file. So the right library, the right file, and the right cell make sure the technology library is gpdk 045 you don't need a template file and the layer mapping should be the correct layer mapping the gpdk 045 layer map hit translate no errors then hit okay and that's it then we go on to hfss so we'll do this again from scratch i've already done it once but create a new file um, project inside hfss design and then let's save this to
HFSS, T-Line, call it YouTube. Okay, and then I'll say this is GCPW version one. Okay, so change the solution type to driven model. Hit right click, design settings, enable material override. And one more thing you may want to change is when you're doing lens simulations, we'll get to later, but make sure for now edit global material environment should be vacuum. Okay, then hit model, modeler uh, import. And now we'll import the PD, uh, GDS file, which we just streamed. Go to your cadence directory, and then it should be there, which is this one. Hit open. And now it will tell you to select the tech file, which is what we created so far, right? Turn layer mapping file, and then select the tech file we made. <clears throat> and then hit OK. Nice. So now it has imported all the metal layers and dielectric layers. So I'll hide the dielectric layers for now. And we see that that's our transmission line that we just made. Okay, so now we need to assign layers. So assign silicon, and then go to the layers that we just made. And then hit silicon, assign passivation. Passivation, assign oxide U. Side M. So this is a little bit tedious. You can actually script this, which I'll cover maybe in a later video. But for now, let's just go ahead like this. M1, M11. There we go. We don't have M1, M8 yet because we only made M1, M2. So we also need to update that. But we'll update this later when we actually find out how to find the composite dialect. Uh, bulk conductivity, which I said we'll cover in a later video, right? So for now, I'm just assigning it M1, M2. And lastly is M11. Okay. So just check that all the layers are correct. Um, one M11, oxide L, M, U, passivation, and silicon. Okay, nice. So we don't actually need the silicon layer for this simulation because uh, the, the the electric fields actually will not be going down there based on the kind of excitation and the setup we have here, right? And this would only make the simulation very long, so I'm just going to delete that for now. And then I also want to right click, I mean, right select these and then make them transparent so that we can see the layers. Hide it. Okay, so now we need to assign excitations. We've assigned the materials. Um, I'll click on a box and I want to make a box in XZ. So now we're assigning what is known as wave ports. Uh, if you don't know what a wave port and lump port is, how to assign ports, I will cover that in a separate video. <clears throat> but for now, uh, just follow these steps. So I made a rectangle box there. Uh, and then I'll hit F for face selection. Select that face, right click, edit surface. Move faces by 25 microns. Oh, one more thing I want to change is the units. So I'll make the units micrometers. Okay. So now I made sort of this wall here. Um, to make it a little bit larger even. Be 35 microns. Okay. And then I'll say edit, duplicate, mirror. And I mirror about this axis. And that creates a mirror for the wall. And now I'll hit face selection again and select these two faces. Right click, edit surface, create object from face. View these faces and now I'll assign two ports. So I'll click on this, select object, select that. Right click, assign excitation, port, wave port. And just go with the defaults. Same for the other one, port, wave port. Done. Okay, and then these boxes that we made, we need to assign actually material to them and they need to be PEC for the wave port to work correctly. I'll cover wave ports and lump ports in a separate video, but there are many already tutorials on these topics uh, that you can look for online. Okay, so we've done with the excitations, we are done assigning materials, now we need to assign a boundary. So I'll say right click create open region at 100 gigahertz, say okay. Now that creates a huge air box. 
right? We don't need to show that, you can hide that. Okay, um, we are pretty much ready, I think. Um, so I'll save it. <clears throat> we have boundaries, we have excitations, or we need to add an analysis. So I'll say advanced, 100 gigahertz, 20 passes, with two converged passes. 50 to 150 is fine. And I think that's it. Then validate, close, and then analyze. So this should take a few minutes. Once it's done, I'll come back and we'll look at the results. Okay, so the simulation finished. Um, let's look at the results. Create a rectangular plot, and maybe I'll look at S11, S21. Oh, crashed. I don't know why. Let me just fix this and come back. So I guess... Uh, yeah. HFS has crashed for some reason. I restarted it and then reran the simulation. Uh, we can look at the results now. And then let's plot S11 and S21. We report. And if you look at the results, you know, of course, S21 is nice and it's no loss. The marker. So the insertion loss is very small, less than 0.1 dB. And it's properly matched, of course, because it's just a transmission line and we've used wave ports. Okay, what I really care about instead is to look at the port Z0. So we'll say port Z0, Z1, and then we look at the real and imaginary part. And we see that we have something that's very close to a 50 ohm line, right? 49 point something, 49 ohms or so is the port impedance, which is nice. Okay, so why is this nice? I mean, it's nice because this thing sits nice on a, in terms of dimensions. This is about five. Um, this is 10, 20, and then the sidewalls don't matter that much, but yeah. So because it's, you know, it, it kind of is, the width is a multiple of five microns for both the ground plane and the line and the separation between these two walls. That will be very useful to us in the future because we'll design structures based on um, five by five grids. So that's why I was kind of going with uh, this kind of design uh, from the beginning. Okay, so, so far we've seen basically how to make a high frequency structure, uh, like a, in this case, a transmission line, export it to HFSS and then simulate it in HFSS to get some results. Uh, obviously this is not the final layout, only this layer is the correct layer, all the other layers are dummy layers, right? So in the next video or maybe in the future videos, we'll look at how to actually make grids uh, that you can replace these walls with that satisfy DRC. And once we do that, that will also give us a way on how to extract essentially um, the effective um, conductivity of these composite metal layers. Okay, so with that, I'd like to stop. Uh, in the next video, we'll probably go in this direction and explore more on layouts and different um, design techniques. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If not, thank you. See you in the next one.